Hey everyone, Steve here, and this is my Western Precision Audio AD110 analog drum synthesizer module. It's, mm, I guess, some kind of recreation of a, another drum machine that had the numbers 110 in it, and it's by Devon at Western Precision Audio. I'm a bit of a fan of his work. I've also got his B2 kick and his phase animated oscillator, PA0, both very good modules. But today we're talking about the AD110, which as I said is a six voice drum module, all analog. I'm running a vector sequencer to sequence the drums coming in via CV here. There's no MIDI, it's CV only for input for gates. And I'm taking outputs. I've got two outputs going to individual inputs on my sound card, my sound interface, sorry, I'm showing my age saying sound card. And I've got four outputs here going to a dope for narrow mix. So I'm taking those four and aggregating them over to a single output here. If I was recording a track, I'd probably just take them all as individual outputs, but this is the setup I'm using right now. So that's enough of my yap. This is what it sounds like. Let's um, go back to basics for a second and just start with the kick and we'll just get a kick sequenced in. I'll put two. Okay. Now it must be noted this, this module also has a mix output as well, which works very well. Of course, when you're going with single voice outputs, you get a hotter signal. When you're going all six via one, obviously it's got the same headroom as one output, so it kind of has to, um, you know, aggregate all those sounds into one output. Uh, yeah, it does sound good though, um, as a mix or as an individual out, but my way is generally individual outs. So here's the kick. I've got the pitch set up here on the kick at about one o'clock. Let's move it back to mid. Goes all the way. Now where it gets really fun is the resonance. There's a really healthy amount of... It's got a really nice thwack on the attack of the kick. But that resonance is just stunning. Kind of like it's sitting there for some reason, it just sounds good to my ear. Plenty of sweet spots though, it's not one of those modules that only has one good kind of spot. So let's bring, uh, take one of the kicks out, put a snare in. Now we have decay and pitch on the snare. That's maximum decay. Sounds like you're hitting a snare that's covered in rice, Devon. Oh yeah. So that, with minimum decay, takes the snare back to like, I don't know, it's almost a wood block, or a very high tuned tom. Maybe it's Bill Bruford with a midi tom. I like it. I like it there. But again, the attack on that snare is just lovely, and you have a pitch control. I've got it at about 11.30 right now. Let me dial that all the way up. Oh yeah. All the way down. So you could go for some really nicely drawn out snares for kind of slower tempos. We'll get some really silly sort of sharp snares for your IDM type glitchy stuff as well. It's a really versatile drum module in that regard. And in fact, what initially attracted to, to me, sorry, attracted me to it rather, um, was kind of that flexibility, but also that just really natural analog sound to the drums. It's 
Beautiful. All right, let's get a couple of hi-hats in. That's closed hats. I'm going to put an open hat just before the last two closed hats. Yeah. You can see those little LEDs dutifully lighting up when the open eye hats hit. So let's have a listen to what the open eye hat sounds like by itself. That open hat just goes on forever. It's lovely. So what I'm going to do is just... I just want to focus on that open hat by itself for a second. Okay, now I'm going to bring in those... Um, closed hats. So the open hat's choked by the closed hat, but it's not closed immediately. It's almost like the closed hat reduces the decay of the, o the open hat, but doesn't completely lock it off. And it's got that lovely... There. But if you put two hats closed, it's locking up by the time it gets to the second one. So let's take the middle closed out. Yeah. So now I've added those other sounds in, I'm feeling like I want to change the kick pitch a little bit. symbol. Sorry. So that's a symbol on its own with minimum decay. There it feels like I'm holding onto the symbol and just tapping on the side with a stick. I love the decay on this. Can you... It's a real shape to it. It's not just linear, it's, it's got something there. Alright, now we're in a Bruce Lee movie. So what Devin's done with this is take the other 110 drum module and just kind of add some conveniences to it, like the pitch, the decay, the resonance and so on for the various sounds. Um, and I'm going to get to the clap in a sec. But uh, it does not have, for instance, CV in control on the decay. So if you want to get fun with it, then you're going to do that by hand. Or you might take it into your Rossum assimilator or your Squawp sample and just make a whole sample bank out of these sounds. That'd be really easy. Um, yeah, okay, so let's get to the clap. Okay, so... And I should be able to get a clap. Oops, right here. All right, so the clap has a reverb on it and a spread. I've got it on minimum spread. That reverb's got a nice sort of cloudiness to it. Spread becomes like a messy clap of drunk people on New Year's Eve. Yeah. I like tight claps. And generally if I add reverb, I do it way later. Let's move that clap so it's not sitting on top of this there. Now the clap is quite loud. And even for the master mix out on the AD-110, 
um, I found that I liked to be able to sort of dial it down a little bit. Uh, but it is a big pronounced clap and it's lovely. Um, so, look, it's an analogue drum synthesizer. It does exactly what it says on the packaging. The other thing it has that I haven't gone into is it has an accent input for the mix output. Um, so that when you're using the mix output, you can uh, shoot a gate or a trigger into the accent input. I'm probably a gate. And it will increase the volume or the accent for that particular range of hits. It also has this great balance feature, um, which I probably can't demonstrate right now. But what that does is if the further you go counterclockwise, it goes to the kick and the snare. And the further you go clockwise, it plays the hi-hats. And that's amazing because if you're jamming on some something and you just want to sort of really quickly just zone out and get the kick and snare only, you can do that just with this knob and then you can sort of bring the others gradually back in. It's a really nice feature. Uh, very intelligently done, actually. But um, I'm a big fan of this module and it's going to be a keeper for me. It's 16 HP. Uh, you can get it as, I believe, a DIY kit or built, uh, built by Devon at, at Western Precision. The great thing about his builds is they're solid as. These knobs just feel lovely, and that goes for all of the, the range of modules that he's produced that I've tried. Um, I would definitely recommend this module, and um, hope that you've enjoyed this video and all of the mess around my screen. So, so let's just have a bit of a play. Thanks for watching.